East Africa's last coastal forest, 400 square kilometers of it. This is a special place, a biological treasure trove, and the only home of an animal that hardly anyone ever sees. This secretive animal is the symbol of the struggle to save the forest. It's a creature out of a fairy tale, as strange as its name, the elephant shrew. The Arabuco forest is a model for the protection of nature in Africa. The aim is for the local people to live off the forest without destroying it. It's quite a challenge. The forest starts on the coast of the Indian Ocean, once it stretched all the way from Somalia to Mozambique. The last traces are found in Kenya in East Africa, north of Mombasa. Arabuke Sokoke, the shadow forest of the elephants and of their miniature cousins. One man here watches over all the living things in the forest. Willy Kombe grew up at the edge of the forest and today he's a ranger. He's fascinated by all forms of life, even a hermit crab found far inland. Willie spends all day in the forest, counting the elephant shrew's hides and checking their nests. A pile of leaves like this is the overnight camp of one of these shy creatures. The number of nests indicates the number of animals. I feel very comfortable. I feel like I'm in heaven. I really enjoy it. It's so cool. You really feel that you are in nature. Yeah, with the bad songs, all the noise that you hear. Really nice for me. And what Willie likes best is the beast with a rat's tail, as big as a rabbit, with its golden hindquarters. Plus, of course, an elephant's trunk. It's all a bit of a puzzle for zoologists and classifiers. In fact, elephant shrews have their own category. Because they're neither elephants nor shrews, they're nowadays known by their African name, Singi. Their habitat in the Arabuco forest is under threat as human settlements move ever closer. Over a hundred thousand people live in 50 nearby villages, all putting pressure on this tiny nature reserve. Many of the people are poor. That means they depend on the forest for food, medicine, fresh water and firewood. Willie understands the people's needs. He knows if they have no alternative, they will destroy the forest. On the other side of the forest, the Giriyama tribe have kept a very different way of life. It's much more traditional. This is Rachab and his cousin Karembo. 
Karembo is 12. She's preparing the dinner. She has to lend a hand at home. That doesn't leave too much time for homework and school books. And the family can't afford to send her to secondary school. Karembo works and studies hard. She's heard that you can get support for your education if you help to sustain the forest. But like many of the people here, Karembo doesn't know a lot about the forest and the animals that live in it. Elephant shrews. For some, they're a tasty morsel, a delicacy. But they're also the main attraction for tourists and the symbol of the forest. A few thousand tourists come on safari every year, bringing with them much needed hard currency. Willie is their guide. The forest is home to more than 600 kinds of plants and hundreds of animal species. Kenya has made the Arabuko a national park. It's a hotspot of biological diversity, a world natural heritage site. Even though most visitors never get to see a Sengi face to face, the other small forest creatures have a magic of their own. What is it? A stick insect. <sighs> yeah, it's quite harmless. Part of the safari fees go to help talented local school children. Willie often comes to this school at the edge of the forest to share his knowledge about the jungle and to promote its symbol. Do you see this? This animal is very famous. Uh, in Arabuko Sokoke, it's the only place that is seen. It uses this long snot. Rajab and Karembo want to learn all they can about the forest if they come top of the class, they can win a scholarship, financed by income from projects in the national park. And Willie is only too pleased to help them learn. For the children, the forest is a scary place. It's where the spirits of their ancestors live. But they'll have to go deep into the woods to have a chance to see a singe. Willie introduces them to the songs of the forest birds. Mm 
I like to see the trees, the trees that are used to chase away witchcraft. I like those trees over there. I'm happy to see how the trees are growing here. I like to see the birds. Willie explains to the children how an elephant shrew behaves. And they're in luck. A real live elephant shrew. During the day, Sengi look for food. At night, they sleep in one of their leaf nests. The elephant shrew act as an indicator of the forest. Because where there is disturbance, you don't get the elephant shrews. Where the forest is quite thick, is uh, well, there's no illegal cutting. There are so many elephant shrews. But this habitat and the elephant shrews themselves are in danger. In spite of all the ranger's efforts, there are plenty of poachers around. Some are simply hungry, but others are in the lucrative bushmeat trade. Setting traps is illegal. Elephant shrews are shy creatures. They live on their own and are sensitive to every sound in the vicinity. And they use their trunk to sniff out worms and beetles in the undergrowth. Arabuco is also a refuge for animals with rather bigger trunks. 150 elephants live in the forest. In the evening, they leave their hides in the bush and approach the villages. The rangers are here to protect the forest from humans, but also the other way round. They're on duty through the night. Tonight, everything seems calm, but suddenly... The alarm is raised. The rangers must leave. Elephants have been seen in the farmer's fields. They mustn't hurt them, just frighten them away. Willie visits Karembo and her parents in their village. Karembo's cousin Ratchab is there too. 
Willie tells them stories of his experiences in the forest. Most of the people are afraid of the animals in the forest. There's a special legend about the elephant shrew. If a pregnant woman eats one, she will have forgetful children. The idea comes from the shrew's flight behavior. When it's frightened, it runs forward a few steps and then stops, as though it's forgotten why it's running away. It starts and stops. That's how they explain it anyway. Radshab and Karembo learn a lot from Willie about their magic forest. It's useful information, not least for school. The next morning, Karembo sets off for school. It's a four kilometer walk every day. She walks along the fields at the edge of the forest, past animals both big and small. The children have to watch out for the elephants when they come close to the plantations. Baboons are one of three monkey species that also plunder the farmer's fields. There's nothing the rangers can do about them. But they can combat the other animals threatening the villages and their fields. The rangers have built a fence separating the villages from the forest to defuse the conflict with the elephants. The fence doesn't quite surround the national park. There are still points where an elephant can cross to meet other elephants outside the park. Elephants are nomadic, and they're strictly protected in Kenya. The fence must be regularly checked. Elephants are quite capable of knocking it down. The idea is that the people need to be involved in the management of the forest. It's their job to check the wires. That way, they don't get the feeling the animals are better protected than they are. Thanks to the electric fence, the fearsome jumbos are now respected neighbors. Village elder Nelly Katana is enthusiastic. I like them. I like to see them pass at a safe distance, and I admire them. But when they come nearer and destroy, no, no. We like them now, but we didn't before because they used to cause such havoc. When they came and damaged our property, we didn't like them at all. I used to say they should all be killed, but now I like them. A new image, the result of conflict management. Elephants are no longer seen as a danger, but are admired. Every evening, villagers gather at the fence, waiting for the jumbos to arrive.
They only come out of the bush when it's getting really dark. They've been hunted and intimidated for too long. People stay here for hours to see the great mammals. The elephants of the Arabuco forest are a little smaller than those of the savannah. They've adapted to the bush. But that other animal with a proboscis is much smaller still. Though they may be called elephant shrews, they're not related to shrews and only distantly to elephants and sea cows. At least that's what zoologists think. They have a very good sense of smell to sniff out prey. They need the leafy undergrowth of the high forest and they need to be left undisturbed. Sengis are threatened by the loss of their habitat. Local people are taking firewood illegally. But the forest is so much more than a source of raw materials. Tourists bring money into the region. Wildlife guides like Willy fuel the enthusiasm for the coastal forest. So down there, this is one of the seasonal ponds that... If they're lucky, visitors will get to see the hippos. And 20 meters up on the platform of a baobab tree, they can admire the secret inhabitants of Arabuco. Many animals live only in the crowns of the trees. The forest begins at the sea, more than 20 kilometers away. This tidal coast has plenty of fish and attracts birds in their thousands. This coastal fringe is Africa's second biggest bird sanctuary. Where the sea becomes land, mangrove saplings mark the beginning of the forest. This tidal zone attracts the tourists too. The locals have built an observation platform. Entry fees from the tourists help boost the local economy. The Swahili coast has been a trading center for centuries. Spices and porcelain came from Arabia, India, and China. The forest yielded ivory, animal skins, and wood in exchange. In those days, the coast and the forest could sustain a flourishing population. All that remains of the Swahili culture today is a ruined city in the jungle, abandoned since the 16th century. No one knows why people left this magic place.
the forest has taken back this city, built of coral stone. Now it looks like a backdrop for the Jungle Book. And just as in the book, it has new inhabitants. A millipede, affectionately known as a Mombasa train. Singhis have sharp teeth to break through its hard carapace. The schools at the edge of the forest are full to bursting. They're short of buildings, books and teachers. Karimbo shares her classroom with a hundred other children. Karimbo works hard. She wants to get good results. Most of her classmates will have to leave school at the age of 13. They have no money. But Karembo knows that if she studies hard, she can get support from the Environmental Fund for a better education. Ever since she saw an elephant shrew for the first time, she's been a fan. She just thinks they're funny. Symbolically, the Sengi stands for Karembo's future by bringing money into the region. A Sengi's most important tool is its nose, not just for sniffing, but for digging too. It marks its territory with urine. A second elephant shrew would not be tolerated outside the mating season. Its gold-colored rear is covered in thick fur, and the skin beneath is thicker too, probably a protection against the bites of other members of its own species. The forest doesn't belong just to the elephant shrew. Recently, there have been unusual interlopers in its territory. Butterflies. Hundreds of farmers on the edge of the forest are breeding them. This project is called Kipepeo. That's Swahili for butterfly. The farmers know every species and their needs.
catches are carefully monitored so that Arabuco Sokoke's butterfly populations are never endangered. The butterflies lay their eggs on the same leaves they feed on. Under close observation, they grow from larvae to pupae. It's the pupae that are valuable. Depending on the species, farmers can earn 50 cents or a dollar apiece. It's a legal alternative for many who would otherwise have gone poaching. It's given hundreds of families a secure income. The butterflies are shipped to butterfly farms in Europe and America because they can't be bred there. These pupae have just a few days to reach their destination. The forest is beginning to pay for itself. So these people will protect it. That's the thinking behind Kipapeo. But this forest is still a self-service store for the people who live here. Poachers kill about 15,000 animals a year. Willie often finds extremely well-made traps, many of them designed for elephant shrews. When he finds a trap, he destroys it to protect the Singhi. They already have enough enemies. Enemies like the Puff Adder. Today, the elephant shrew is lucky. The puff adder gives up. Here at the snake farm at the edge of the forest, the poisonous puff adder is highly valued and treated with respect. They milk it to make anti-serum to its poison. The puff adder is responsible for 90% of deaths from snake bites in this region. Arabuco is a paradise for snakes and it's crucial to have the antidotes close by. This farm holds about 50 different species of snakes. They're an attraction to the children of the forest, as long as they stay in their cages. The children only know snakes as an invisible threat. But most snakes are harmless for people. It's all part of Karimbo and Rachab's forest education. Bit by bit, Willie reveals to them the world on their doorstep. A world that's disappearing. Deciduous forests are rare in Kenya. They cover less than 2% of the country. Yet Arabuko has very many rare trees, and some that grow nowhere else. But the local people still need wood for their fires. Arabuko's Forest Research Institute has been looking for solutions. This is a nursery for rare species, and there's more. The gardeners are raising exotic plants. Fast-growing trees from Asia are grown as seedlings 
and then distributed to farmers. Seedlings of hope that the trees in the forest may be left alone. The farmers at the edge of the forest learn how to plant the trees. Karembo's father is one of them. The school children brought the seedlings to their parents. They're handed out in the schools. It's important for Karembo that her father does his bit, because that gives her points towards the financial support she needs. In six years' time, this delicate plant will be big enough to use as wood for building. for building new huts in the village. That means Karembo's father won't have to go into the woods to cut down trees, and the elephant shrew's territory will remain undisturbed. The Giriyama people still live a very traditional life. When they're ill, they go to the medicine man rather than the hospital. And his medicine often comes from Arabuko's green pharmacy, the forest itself. The Forest Institute has alternatives to offer here too. <laughs> Natural local remedies are brought from the forest and planted in the medicinal garden. This adds to the institute's knowledge and protects the forest. Then the herbs in the garden are harvested. And the Sengi benefits too when no humans come into his domain. The less the forest is disturbed, the happier he is. He doesn't like change at all. Today, Willy is following a different trail. Sometimes he gets very close to the illegal woodcutters. Sometimes we meet with poachers, but the way they react, uh, it depends on how you are going to. Sometimes if you confront them, like asking, what are you doing with the matches, such like things, they may be very aggressive and they might be dangerous. So sometimes we just overlook them, but when you reach, uh, to the office, you report them, and then people can go for them. Willie reports his sightings at the headquarters of the Kenya Wildlife Service. This area? This place, eh? Yes. Okay, it is some almost two, three kilometers from the boundary. Yes. And the rangers respond at once. It can be a dangerous mission. Poachers are often armed with machetes or bows and arrows. Mm -hmm. 
In spite of these disturbances, the numbers of elephant shrews don't seem to be changing. No one knows exactly how many there are. But naturalists and rangers are continuing their struggle to save the species and its habitat. There's hope yet for the spirit of the forest. The rangers are hard on the heels of the poachers. Often the poachers are familiar figures from the nearby villages. But increasingly the woodcutters are from further away. They know they can do good business with the wood. Most likely the judge will find them and they'll spend some time in jail. But there's no shortage of people to replace them. <laughs> At the edge of the forest, some of the children are getting ready for a special day. An award ceremony. Ratshab and Karimbo have done it. Thanks to their good marks, they will receive money to go on to the next class. And if they work hard, they'll go to university. Zawadi hizi zitapewanwa na mwalimu wao wa somo la science ambaye Willie's tours and other nature protection projects have already brought in enough money to build this permanent schoolroom and to provide hundreds of school children with a better education. Rajab and his cousin Karembo will one day live in better conditions. The forest and its attractions for tourists will make that possible. In future, even more of the forest's children should receive help towards their education. 
and Willie hopes that they will protect the forest too. When I grow up, I would like to be a doctor. I will teach a community how to preserve the forest, plant trees, and protect the environment. When I complete my education, I would like to be a person who stops cars like this, and like this. Someone who stops moving vehicles and asks them questions. That's who I would like to be when I finish my school. In the holidays, the children often go into the forest. Willie has opened their eyes to a world they now see differently. Okay. Willie is in the forest every day. He's happy with the progress they're making there. There is no problem. Very few people are still ignorant, but majority of them are benefiting. So there is future for this forest. Yeah. Willie is doing his bit to change the thinking of a whole community. And that will preserve the Sengi's only habitat for the future. There's something new in the shrews' lives. It's the mating season in this territory. They approach each other very cautiously. Willie has done all he can to ensure their survival. Now they have to do their bit, so there will be enough elephant shrews in the future. <laughs> 